Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe Parker with the Santa Barbara Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. And in this video, we're gonna be going over the enchanting city of Santa Barbara, the pros and cons of what it's like living here. I'm gonna to put together the top 10 pros and the top 10 cons and stick around to the end because I will be throwing in some obscure facts that are really interesting about this town, my hometown of Santa Barbara, where I've been selling real estate for 22 years, making videos for you so you can understand what this town is all about. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it and get into the top 10 10 pros about living in Santa Barbara. All right, let's start with number one, the weather. Everybody knows that Santa Barbara weather is really, really nice. It's really nice because it stays pretty temperate. It's usually about 60 to 80 degrees on any given day of the year. We don't have extreme winters and we don't have extreme summers. We do get some hot summers. There are days, and it seems to be growing the number of days where you really wish you had air conditioning. Most of the homes in Santa Barbara don't have air conditioning, but more and more are having it, and it is becoming more of a must have for a lot of buyers because of the hotter days we are getting. But all in all, compared to the country, Santa Barbara is very mild and temperate. One thing you need to know about Santa Barbara's weather though, is that there are microclimates here. So depending on the neighborhoods, the temperature on any given day could be 10, even maybe 15 degrees difference. For example, the Mesa has a very cool microclimate, the last one to clear during our June gloom season, and also very much um, in the fog, oftentimes whenever the, the coastal eddies producing fog, whereas Mission Canyon is always drier and hotter, maybe 10 degrees hotter. It tends to get in the sun sooner. You might be in the fog in the Mesa, but up in the sun in Mission Canyon, and that's all in the town of Santa Barbara. So the microclimates are something that are really important to pay attention to if you're sensitive to weather. Number two, beaches. We have breathtaking beaches here in Santa Barbara. There's the Jimongous East Beach that runs along the volleyball courts all the way to Stearns Wharf. Some other favorite beaches are the locals, Butterfly Beach, Henry's Beach. We also have Leadbetter Beach. Now, if you wanna get off the beaten path a little bit, go try and find Summerlin Beach. This is a really cool beach that doesn't have a lot of people. And also, Mormesa Beach is an interesting beach because when you get down to Mormesa Beach, you may be finding some naked people walking around. It's one of Santa Barbara's only nude beaches and it's just up from Hope Ranch Beach. So the beaches here in Santa Barbara are truly awesome. Great tide pooling and great walking during the low tide. You can walk all the way down the coast for miles and miles if you'd like. Number three, outdoor adventures. Santa Barbara is known for its active lifestyle because there's tons of things to do outdoors. Whether you love the mountains or the ocean, you could enjoy all those outdoor spaces by staying really active and getting that heart rate up. People love hiking the mountains. There's a lot of great trails. We have a lot of waterfalls and pools that you could jump in up in those creeks right now because we've had a ton of rain this last winter. Also, the beaches have bike paths that run along them. So you could ride your bike from Santa Barbara all the way down to Carpinteria if you'd like and beyond. There's a lot of great scenery on those rides as well. So in addition to those type of outdoor activities, the community itself has a lot of active lifestyle type of businesses. You know, there's lots of yoga studios and gyms um, one of my favorites that I go to is the Santa Barbara Athletic Club. It's a great club that has kind of a social vibe to it, but plenty of classes to choose from. They have a lap pool that I really like to swim in, and they have all the other stuff you want at a gym, like the weights and um, the uh, cardio equipment and things like that. Number four, a rich cultural heritage exists here in Santa Barbara that attracts people from all over the world because it just has this aesthetic to it that's unlike any other place. It starts with the architecture, of course. Things like the Santa Barbara Mission, the Santa Barbara Courthouse, one of the most beautiful courthouses in all of the country. This Spanish style architecture just is, breathes the, the essence into Santa Barbara where you see it everywhere you go. You walk through these neighborhoods, you get up on the Riviera, you notice the red tile roofs, the white stucco. Um, all these things add to the culture of Santa Barbara. And then to experience it even deeper, we have great places like the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History, the Art Museum, there's uh, the Libero Theater with lots of um, shows and arts and activities that come through there for the community to enjoy. So the rich cultural experience in Santa Barbara is unlike any other place. And don't forget about the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. That's another great uh, thing that happens here in Santa Barbara that's part of the culture. Number five, speaking of the Santa Barbara Film Festival, the events and festivals in Santa Barbara are like nothing else you could find in other areas because they attract people to come to things like Fiesta Spanish Days downtown where we have a five day celebration where they have Mercados up here in the upper area of town by Mackenzie Park and down at De La Guerra Plaza. These 
Mercados are full of food vendors, stages with live music. The Mackenzie Mercado has a fair festival going on with that kind of atmosphere, really super fun. Also, the Summer Solstice Parade brings a lot of people in, and we also have Earth Day Festival. Earth Day was started right here in Santa Barbara, so that's a great celebration that happens every year. In addition to that, there's cultural festivals that happen, things like the Greek Festival, the French Festival, all these things can be experienced in the summertime at Oak Park. Number six, the culinary scene in Santa Barbara is rich with all kinds of diversity. Of course, we have some of the best tacos in the world, in my opinion, especially on Milpa Street. You have the highest concentration of great taquerias, I think, ever, and the world famous La Superica is on Milpa Street as well. But in addition to that, we have other great restaurants Santa Barbara State Street up by the Arlington on Victoria Street has a great concentration of some Italian restaurants that I love, Olio Limon, we have uh, Victoria Tortoria and Cadario. Also Bouchon is up in that direction. Some great sushi and there's also some really nice places down in the Funk Zone which has attracted a lot of visitors lately. If you're into fine food you might want to check out the Lark or if you want something really delicious and casual maybe check out Lucky Penny right there at the same area as the Lark. So there's some great dining and drinks and beverages and food scene here in Santa Barbara that's bringing people up the coast from down south or maybe LA, uh, San Diego, San Francisco to come and stay and enjoy all the different places that they could eat here in SB. Number seven, excellent education. Higher education here in Santa Barbara is actually really, really good. We have UCSB, which is one of the best public colleges in the country. We also have Santa Barbara City College, one of the best city colleges in the country. So we're already knocking it out of the park with those two. But in addition, you could find Westmont here. There's also Pacifica Graduate Institute. So we have plenty of options here when it comes to higher education. And that's definitely attracting people to our area, especially UCSB. In addition to those higher education options, don't forget Santa Barbara has really great public schools as well. You've got a lot of elementary schools that are really popular with families, plus private schools to consider. The high schools also have really wonderful academies, different ones, Dos Pueblos, San Marcos, and Santa Barbara High each have their own unique um, offerings that are really specialized for kids' interests, so those are really awesome to look into. In addition, we have some world-renowned private schools to choose from as well. Number eight, Santa Barbara has a thriving art scene. I mentioned the Funk Zone earlier and down in that area of town is a high concentration of some of the best local artists here in town where you could wander around, go through their studios, check out some of their art. Be sure to keep your ear to the ground for some of these studios having special open houses or receptions for artists. There's a great local artist named Pedro de la Cruz. I just went to one of his, his receptions recently down in the Funk Zone. It was great. A ton of people came out for him. He's a really talented young artist who is up and coming. I'm sure you may be hearing of him if it's something that you're interested in, especially that kind of Picasso style abstract art. He does a great job with that, but plenty of great art artists here, anything from paintings to sculpture, glasswork, pottery. The art show down on the beach on the weekends is a great way to experience all the variety of local art that comes out of this community. Number nine, this community is really concerned about the environment, being the place that Earth Day started. We also have one of the first sustainable seafood markets that's open air down at the harbor in the whole country. That has also spread. So I would like to think of Santa Barbara as kind of cutting edge as being environmentally friendly and conscious about how to interact and live in the environment in a safe, balanced way that doesn't intrude or create a lot of extra harm. So Santa Barbara definitely embraces the green kind of uh, nature of living in harmony with Earth. And number 10, community spirit. You'll notice that Santa Barbara really rallies around all their events that they love and you'll feel the vibes when you go out and you meet the locals. You know, Santa Barbara is warm and embracing. They love welcoming people. If you're out there open and you look for it. I think some people may feel like that it's a bit more closed off, but actually Santa Barbara has a lot of openness to it. There's a lot of community that comes together around special events that are happening. And there's also things that you could tap into as a newcomer to Santa Barbara 
to get plugged into those scenes really seamlessly and easy. So things like the Newcomers Club is a great way for someone to get tapped into that environment, that whole community vibe that Santa Barbara sort of embraces that a lot of us feel when we're walking around town. It's a small town and as you get to know people just going out for an evening meal or walking on State Street, you're sure to run into somebody and that's the experience. Whenever you're seeing your neighbors out and about or seeing a friend at the bank or at the bakery, something like that, it really creates a great community vibe. Okay, now that we've covered the pros, let's dive into the top 10 cons of living in Santa Barbara. Starting with number one, the obvious, the cost of living. Now, I hear this a lot from the locals here who have been here and feeling like they're getting priced out of the community. It's very tough to make ends meet with the cost of housing being as high as it is here in Santa Barbara. So that's probably the number one thing that I find is out of balance with a lot of other areas, the cost of housing. Whether you're renting or you're buying, it costs a lot to live here in Santa Barbara. Now the other things that are a little bit out of balance might be the cost of gas. I noticed that is quite a bit higher here in Santa Barbara than a lot of other areas. When I go on a road trip, I try to fill up outside of Santa Barbara. I tend to get a little bit of better deal that way. But the other things tend to balance out pretty well. I don't think like food or anything else costs a bunch more, but cost of services, things like gardeners, plumbers, um, maybe even like car repair, these types of things I think tend to be quite a bit more here in Santa Barbara as well. And it's rooted in I think some of these other higher costs, all these people who live in our community and offer these services have to afford to live here. And so maybe they're passing along that extra cost to you, the consumer, so that they could live here as well. Number two, Santa Barbara has a limited job market. There are some big companies here like we have Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital is a big employer. The County of Santa Barbara is a big employer. UCSB, a huge employer. We also have companies like Sonos or Yardi Systems. Those are also big employers. But in general, Santa Barbara doesn't have that big stock of big companies like a big city does. So we're not having a ton of job opportunities for people to really get those kind of jobs that it takes to be able to afford to live in the housing that Santa Barbara offers. So that's one of the things I think a lot of people would love to be here in Santa Barbara. Barbara, but once they start looking into the jobs that are available that they could get into and then balancing out can they afford a house if they took that job, um, they quickly discover that it's going to be a big challenge and that definitely pushes a lot of people out of their moving forward with their dream of moving to Santa Barbara. Number three, traffic congestion. Now, there's always a lot of construction going on on the freeway here in Santa Barbara. The 101 freeway is what cuts through our town and it's been two lanes forever, but they're slowly making it a three lane freeway all the way through. Now, that's taken a lot of time over probably 20 years now it's been under construction because it's a long stretch and there's a lot to do. So that construction slows things down. The freeway was already slow as it was, but that construction tends to slow things down. Also, crosstown traffic can be busy. Depending on the time of day and the route you're taking, you know, stoplights can back up, um, different intersections can be known for being slow or backed up. So. I know a lot of people coming from the city that deal with big traffic jams and big commutes kind of laugh at us whenever we say we have traffic problems, but once you're here and living here, I think you'll come to agree that there are certain areas or certain times where it does feel a little bit congested, but relax, you're in Santa Barbara, so it's really not that big of a deal, right? So something to think about, Santa Barbara does get a little bit of traffic. Number four, Santa Barbara really has limited nightlife. I mean, we have State Street and the Funk Zone. Those are kind of the main areas to go explore the nighttime activities where you'll find bars. There's a couple of dance clubs on State Street. You get some live music, but it tends to be a little bit sleepy. You know, most places tend to shut down by midnight. You know, some of the main clubs on Friday and Saturday night may stay open until two o'clock, but all in all, it tends to be a little bit of a slower town. Not at those big nightclubs that you get in the city. Um, you don't have um, big concerts. We do have the County Bowl, which produces some really wonderful shows, one of the best venues you could ever go to for live music outdoors, in my opinion. But again, it doesn't attract like the big, huge names, and it's only open part-time in the season. But there's plenty of other places to catch some live music if that's what you're into. I would say Santa Barbara thrives in that department, live music. Um, but as far as the general nightlife, what people are expecting whenever they say nightlife, you might find that Santa Barbara tends to be a little bit sleepy when it comes to it. Number five, tourist crowds. Well, they do come through quite often, especially in the summertime. And, you know, 
If you're not really bumping around where the tourists are, you're not gonna really experience it all that much. But lately we have been getting things like cruise ships and so down along the beach, that definitely produces more traffic as they're ushering them in and out and connecting them on shuttles and trolleys and moving about, you know, you could see the clusters, you know a cruise ship's in town. Um, so, and also during the summer months, uh, we definitely get a big influx of tourists, especially around the times of those big events I mentioned earlier in the video, like Fiesta or summer solstice, that could definitely fill in the town um, so tourism definitely brings in more people and, and if you're living here you know you got to interact with that but it's part of living in a vacation destination really not that big of a deal but some people definitely some of the grouchy locals you could hear them griping about you know oh, another cruise ship I see those tourists coming around so you know if you're not that grumpy, it's really probably not that big of a deal, but maybe you are. Number six. Now, this one's a little bit outdated because we just had the wettest winter on record, but typically I could say that Santa Barbara has got some drought conditions that make water usage a bit more restricted. You know, we have we were just about to go into tighter restrictions when this winter turned on the faucet and filled up all our lakes and reservoirs. So we're probably good for a couple of years, but chances are we'll get back into that situation where we really need to be cautious about the amount of water we're using and how we're using it um, and the systems that we use on a regular basis that use water so that we could use it really efficiently. But um, in the past, we have had things things like moratoriums on water meters where people who wanted to build homes had to put everything on hold for the drought to be over before the municipalities would be issuing more water meters. That's not happening right now, but it's happened in the past and it could happen again. So water is not um, an infinite source supplied here in Santa Barbara. It is getting better. We are full now at Lake Achuma and we have put the desalination plant online. That's a new feature to help fortify our water supply. But in general, we are vulnerable if another big drought sets in. Number seven. Now, if you own a property here in Santa Barbara or you're planning to own a property and you're gonna be doing anything that requires permits, the permitting process here is really painful and slow. A lot of people are pulling their hair out as they navigate it, thinking that they would be able to get through it relatively smoothly and they find that there is long delays, lots of review, lots of going back to the drawing board and all that costs more money. Anytime you gotta go back to your architect or your engineers and redo the plans and then go back for another appointment, all that is time and money. And this is a, what a lot of people experience here in Santa Barbara when they're going through that permitting process. It's very difficult. It's hard. You're going to want to align yourselves with the professionals that know how to navigate it, depending on the type of project you're working on, um, and really be prepared for the long haul on it if it's a big project. Now, one way to kind of get around some of this lately are the auxiliary dwelling unit laws. If you're wanting to improve your home and you take it that direction, it can be a lot more streamlined. And it's the reason why Santa Barbara is so beautiful because they really scrutinize everything that people do to their property. Number eight, earthquake risks. So Santa Barbara has a history of really big earthquakes. In 1925, a major earthquake damaged a big chunk of the city, the majority of State Street, the Mission, all kinds of stuff was crumbled down to the ground and it gave Santa Barbara an opportunity to rebuild in this Spanish colonial style that it is now, making it one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So this is a true fact. We have not had a big earthquake like that since, um, but the faults still exist down there, so it could happen. People often will consider carrying earthquake insurance or at least at the very least make sure that their home has as much bracing and seismic upgrading as it possibly can. A lot of these old homes in Santa Barbara do need some extra retrofitting, things like cripple walls or attaching it down to the foundation. So all these things can be done after the fact and it could be something you look into because we are in earthquake country here in Santa Barbara. Number nine, in addition to being really expensive, there's high demand for housing. So not only will you have to figure out how you're gonna be able to afford the housing in Santa Barbara once you position yourself to do so, then you have to be able to take it down because chances are you're going to have a lot of competition. There's a lot of people that are buying for these valuable pieces of property, you know, these rentals, these homes for sales, whatever it is, you know, the competition is stiff. So you're going to need a game plan. You're going to need to maybe have um, some 
stamina, some longevity, because it may take a few tries before you get the piece of property you're looking for. Whether it's renting or buying, it's always really challenging to get something, at least as of lately, um, for the times that I can remember, we haven't had a time where you know it wasn't a difficult experience to get a property. It's been very competitive for a long, long time now, and I don't think it's changing. The market's already changed quite a bit, but the competitive nature of it, the low inventory still remains. So it's always gonna be competitive, I think, for the near future. So just be prepared for that. All right, and number 10 is circling back to weather. Let's talk about the June gloom, our summer gloomy weather here. So a lot of people are thinking about their summer vacation, beach, sunshine, going to Santa Barbara. I'm so excited. They get their sunscreen, they get their hats, their sunglasses, they book their hotel down on Cabrillo Boulevard, right across from the beach, maybe even spend a little extra and get that ocean view room. And they come for their vacation to explore Santa Barbara and it's nothing but gray skies. Well, this happens quite often often during the summertime, we get this coastal eddy pattern that produces a lot of gray sky over us. Just over the mountains, it's super hot, and that's what pulls in this gray sky and just kind of locks it in right to the city there. And that's why we get those microclimates where the beach, it may never clear at all, and you may need to head to the hills if you're really searching for that sunshine. So. That's a big con, I think. Whenever people are really looking forward to their beach vacation and they come and it's nothing but gray sky out there, it can happen. Um, but to make up for it, in the fall, in the early winter, we could have these bluebird sunny days, 75, 80 degrees while people are getting into the snow and whatnot. So it pays off. So maybe plan your vacation around June gloom if you're looking to get on the beach and get some sunshine here in Santa Barbara. Maybe shoot for October, November. That could be your months. Now remember, while these cons exist, Santa Barbara's unique advantages and beautiful landscape often outweigh these disadvantages. So you just gotta study your preferences, understand what you're looking for, what's important, what are your priorities, um, what are you willing to sacrifice, what are you not willing to sacrifice. All these things could come out in a conversation about what it is you're looking for and what you envision your life being like in the future. And if Santa Barbara's a place that you wanna consider, we could talk more about it and I could answer any questions you have about living here in Santa Barbara or relocating, moving here. This is what I love to do. I make these videos to connect with you, help you understand my hometown of Santa Barbara and give you some more insights so you can make better decisions. And if this video is making you feel like you wanna take this conversation further, I'll put a link down in the description below. You could click on that and we could schedule a meeting, get on a Zoom or get on a phone call or meet in person if you're here in Santa Barbara. Talk about all your goals, what you hope to achieve, and I could show you a way that we could help you make it happen. So I'm Joe Parker with the Santa Barbara Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make it a great one.